I haven't recorded a YouTube video in an extremely long time, nor have I had the interest in recording YouTube content in an extremely long time for the simple fact that creating and maintaining a YouTube culture can be very difficult. YouTube channels and the successful ones in particular are very, 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 very structured. They have sort of a certain pattern that they usually follow. They usually deliver one type of content. And for me, I prefer to do more variety work. That's part of why I switched over to doing streaming on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash gaming. Same as my YouTube handle. However, I wanted to take a little bit of a different approach to creating YouTube videos. Recently, I've been watching a lot of Moist Critical's videos, and he is a rather intelligent guy. He's a very level-headed guy that has a, <laughs> a good sense of humor about him. We'll say that for sure. And I wanted to create videos a little bit more in the same style as him because I think that storytelling is his kind of art, and I think he does a good job of it. And I've got the occasional funny story that I feel like I could make good videos over, including this first one. If you've tuned into my live streams on Twitch, then you're already familiar with the story that I'm about to tell you. But for those of you who have not, prepare, sit down, get yourself a cup of coffee or a nice large thing of popcorn. I'm going to tell you guys about the story of the one-wheeled diddler. Now, that name probably sounds a little weird, the one-wheeled diddler. However, there's a good reason for that name. On the morning of, this was maybe two weeks ago at the time that I'm recording this. Let's see, what day is that? Probably on the morning of, <laughs> it was probably the morning of the 24th. Yes, it was. On the morning of the 24th of August, I went out from my apartment that I had very recently moved into and I decided to go and check out my car before going to work and I didn't notice anything funny about it because the way that my car is parked, I have a carport and it's protected from the elements. What that basically means is that I have to walk across my apartment complex to get to my car. It's a pretty short walk, but the way that I walk means that I only see the front driver side tire and the rear driver side tire. The passenger side tires are completely obstructed from my view whenever I originally walk over there. And for the past week that I had been living there, I didn't ever have any issues so I have never had a reason to go walk around my car until very recently, which is when I went into my car and I tried to back out to go to my normal job. My commute is about 10 minutes. I usually leave at about 7.15 so I can get into the office a few minutes early and I can do my usual work starting at about 7.30 in the morning. Well, I try to back out of my parking spot and I immediately sink down about six inches. So it's like the earth lost its boner that was supporting my car. And I thought I maybe had hit the curb somehow, but I thought, wait a minute, I'm like a foot and a half away from the curb. So nothing makes any sense here. I stand outside and I decide, okay, maybe my tire went out. Maybe I have a flat tire because sometimes that'll happen where maybe there's a little bit of air pressure, but when you start to move, it loses it very quickly. Depends on where you pop your tire. In this case, that is isn't what happened. When I went out and I looked at my tires, somebody decided to strip all of the hubcap, the wheel, and the tire, and the pressure sensor off of my rear passenger side tire. And I was absolutely livid. But really, what confused me more about this is that my car wasn't exactly a brand new car. I'll put a picture of what it looks like for reference, by the way. My car was actually pretty old. It's about a 10-year-old car, and the tires themselves aren't really anything new either. As a matter of fact, when I was looking at the tires, the three that were remaining on my car were actually kind of beaten up, and I probably need new tires within the next six months. The other thing is the wheels weren't exactly new either. Those wheels had been on the car ever since I got it. And actually I got it from my parents. So I've had the car for about five years. My parents had the car for about five years. So it's about a 10 year old car. There wasn't really anything particularly appealing about this specific tire. So it doesn't make any sense to me why somebody would want to steal a single wheel off of my car. Lo and behold, I get the donut on while saying a copious amount of cuss words and I eventually get to the office and I have to call the Firestone right down the street from my from my office conveniently and I'm able to go get a spare wheel put on I'm able to get the tire and I'm able to get locking lug nuts because after that crap I'm not having a single person go and try to steal a single wheel from my car again and allow me to say taking care of a car is a surprisingly expensive thing as it turns out, two of my other wheels were put on backwards, so the Firestone had to go and fix those. 
So by the time it was said and done, it cost me almost $600 to replace this stolen wheel off my car, which mind you, that's a lot of money for somebody fresh out of college. I should also be mentioned that uh, this person who stole it has still not been identified to this day. It is currently September 7th at the time that I'm recording this. It is Labor Day. And the thing that makes it so much weirder is that I called the front office of the apartment complex to report the incident to them. And they told me I should go ahead and call the non-emergency police line to go ahead and make a police report. So I called the police report or I called the police to file the police report rather. And I ended up uh, on the phone with them for about 25 minutes. They were super nice about it. They, they got it filed very quickly, but he said, this is the weirdest crime he's ever heard of because most of the time when wheels are taken, they usually will take them in a pair or at least four. Typically, they'll take all four wheels off of a car because they want to have a fully matching set. That's what makes this robbery so weird. And that's why I've coined this person as the one wheeled diddler because it's so strange that they took a single wheel off of my car, but they left the lug nuts and they also left the jack. Everything felt very strange about this robbery. And then lo and behold, when I go to file the incident report with the apartment complex, so they have it on record, they actually told me that this isn't the first time the one wheel diddler has been in our neighborhood, which is even weirder to me. As it turns out, the one wheel diddler has been in this complex for a few years now, but it's been three years or so since he actually attacked. The one wheel diddler junior, as we're going to call him, or the original one rather, so maybe senior, was a kid in a neighborhood not that far away from the complex and the police were able to find him, recover the wheels, and then arrest him. So this appears to be a totally unrelated case where I actually have a second one wheel diddler. And to this day, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to figure out who took my wheel just because this is such a stupidly obscure thing for somebody to have hidden away. And, and, and take from somebody. I almost don't even understand the reasoning behind somebody taking a single wheel. I cannot figure it out for the life of me and it doesn't make any sense. Why would somebody want to take a single wheel off of a relatively old car? It doesn't make any sense to me. People are weird. The pandemic has made people act really weird just because they can act weird. And maybe for some reason, Somebody thought, oh, maybe I've got coronavirus, but maybe if I eat half of this person's random wheel, they'll be able to fix me. Who knows? That's all I have. See ya.